for you. God is real, angels are real, demons are real. Is the devil real? Oh, yes. Yes. Well, it has to be. You know, we were talking about Michael Knowles being surrounded by the medium and, you know, you've got a boundary. Yeah. Well, God has a boundary too. He's got a very tight boundary. He's a perfect, he's perfect. He can't take anything resembling imperfection, right? He, he right. can't take it into himself because that would be a contradiction. Yep. Okay, so God needs an antithesis in order to be properly defined. What is that antithesis? Anti-God or Satan. So it definitely exists. Now, Satan isn't coherent because, you know, he, he basically hates existence. Nevertheless, he gains coherence through human beings, through secondary tellers, as they're called in the CTMU. In other words, Satan can nucleate power structures, for example, you know, things like corporations and governments, where you've got people in there that can be acquired as resources, and there's a kind of skeleton, you know, a corporate organization, a governmental, you know, organization that's holding them together, holding them in place, that can be exploited by Satan. So you're not describing Manichaeism. You're not saying there's God and then the, the opposite of God and there's some maybe equivalence between the two. You're, you're saying that God, obviously there is an antithesis. Christ has an antichrist, but that it's incoherent. And, and in, 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 are you saying that he sort of lack, that the devil sort of la lacks substance or la that's why he needs the humans? I'm or? saying the devil lacks coherence. Coherence is what brings everything into superposition. Right, with itself. In other words, it allows something to, this is going to sound a little bit paradoxical, allows something to communicate non-locally with itself. Okay. Right? All of its possible states are in superposition. They exist all at, all at once. Okay? And uh, this is, this is uh, pretty much inescapable. I'm reminded of a, a writer, René Girard, who... who has this idea, had this idea, that uh, the devil being who he is, is a kind of contradiction of being. And it seems to me what Gerard says is something similar to what you're saying, which is that he requires us to kind of do his dirty work. That is correct. Yeah. We give existence to the devil, to Satan. Now you have to make a distinction, however, between Satan and Lucifer, for example. Now Lucifer is an angel. Okay, that's what he's supposed to be, a fallen angel, right. you know, but nevertheless, an angel, right? The angel of light, okay, the morning star, whatever you want to call him, okay? That is not Satan. Those are two different things. What's the difference? This would no doubt be classified as a heresy, for example, in the, <laughs> in the church. I did, not, I did not bring the Inquisition with me yet. They're <laughs> not behind the curtains here. So, so what is your idea then? Because traditionally, it's understood that Satan and Lucifer are the same person. You're saying they're different. Yes. yes How right. are they different? Well, Lucifer walks the fence. Basically, he's the angel of light. What does light do? Basically, light is what brings reality to us. Okay, He's walking the fence between good and evil. We're all in the same boat. We all walk the fence between good and evil. Okay, How can we do that? Okay, Well, through <laughs> Lucifer. Right. Yeah. And the grace of God. Right. Through, yeah. through, through Lucifer. Basically, Lucifer has been exiled here because God can't take won't tolerate the imperfections of this place, okay? He has Lucifer handle that for him. And that's why Lucifer is, is what he is. That's how he fell down here to earth, okay? He's performing a function here. That function is light. I mean, I don't know, do you follow what I'm... I, I do, I'm, I'm still trying to parse the difference a little. If Christ says, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven, is he describing Satan here or he's describing Lucifer? Or both? If Christ were here and I could hear his exact words, I could perfectly interpret them. Right. Okay. okay. Yeah, yeah. But it's very hard to do that, you know, 2,000 years after the fact, right, with all the different translations and interpretations that the Bible has undergone. Okay? And so what I like to do is I like to approach it from first principles and look at it logically, right, rationally. And what does logic tell us, if anything? Okay? Well, logic tells us that basically God needs a negation but that negation is too incoherent to function in this world mm -hmm. except through human beings. Right. What's the rest of it? What's the rest of it all about? Yeah. And this is, Lucifer is a concept that is better suited than Satan to that purpose. I, I love this point that uh, he's incoherent, that the old devil is incoherent. That I, I read some poem, I think it's a modern poem, that says, you know, sin is a big, 
is a big problem because it's evil. But it's also a big problem because it's such a waste of time. It's such a, it's so incoherent. When you think of people, when you actually, when you take the suffering out of it and you just think of people committing any particular sin, it just doesn't make any sense, does it? Well, or you the, sense think it, that it, the sense that it makes to them is they're enjoying it. <laughs> they're hedonistically deriving <laughs> right. pleasure from, from the sin. And of course, we all, you know, have the same pleasure mechanisms. Yep. So we're all tempted to commit sin, but we've got to keep a lid on it. There have to be limits. Okay, and what I'm worried about is that now Satan controls the world and there are certain people involved in running things who don't have those limits. Well, they're so rich, they're so you know, powerful that they don't need those limits anymore. So they've more or less thrown them off. Now, there, there's nothing new to the idea that uh, S Satan or, or Lucifer or let's call him just the old, uh, the old devil himself can, is the prince of this world and that the rich and the powerful just... They do his bidding, and they're bad people, and they follow their lowest appetites and their pleasures, and they, they can be sadistic. And so that, that's been going on for a long time. Is there something particular about the moment we're living in that says it's actually gotten much worse? Yes, uh, that is. They've actually, we, we've had such a, so many technological advancements hmm. that now the, the technology of, of surveillance and coercion are such, and these people are so rich you know, they're like black holes gravitating all the money to themselves, that they're, they're unstoppable, okay? And because they're unstoppable, because they, they actually run everything, okay, we are endangered by them now. It sounds to me like you're saying we don't live in uh, Schoolhouse Rock, I'm a bill up on Capitol Hill. We're not living in the republic that a lot of us say that we're living in. That's correct. We're ruled, basically, the world is globalistic now. It's run by globalists. That's, that's, what, that, that's their goal. I mean, that's what global means. We're going global. You know? <laughs> it's it's <laughs> that, oligarchic. Huh? And it would therefore be oligarchic. That's, what you're that, that's absolutely correct. Oligarchic because very few of them actually exist. And th this is beyond, uh, you know, a, U a U.S. senator. This is beyond the oh, structures. No, those are puppets. You know, I don't, I, it's, it's fairly common knowledge now, I suppose, that I regard uh, most politicians as being one step removed from prostitutes. Yeah. Right? <laughs> that's been true for and that's the, not, the that's two not oldest professions. Right? There, there are, you know, a few exceptions, but let me tell you, they're, they're on the run. Yeah. Okay? So it's, uh, it's a very serious situation. Right? And if you take a look at these globalists, the ones that have thrown off all the limits and they're fantastically rich and powerful now, and you take a look at what they actually have upstairs, I'm afraid it's not very impressive. Right. Okay? I mean, if you really look at their intellectual production, Soros might be the best of them. Yep. He's at least got a theory of economics, you know, mm -hmm. it's flawed, but, you know, he at least has that. The rest of them are just a bunch of sybarites. What about, uh, I guess, even outside of banking or finance per se, what about someone like, Bill Gates, that guy's everywhere. He seems to be, I don't know, why is he an expert on health care? I don't know, but my television tells me that he is. Why is he? <laughs> so someone like that, but is he a, he's a smart guy. He's got to be, right? He... Oh, he's not stupid. Bill Gates is, uh, he's got a respectable intellect, but there's something misfiring hmm. there. Okay, Bill is very concerned with, uh, with overpopulation, and yeah. we do have an overpopulation problem. So then this brings me to, a, I, I asked friends of mine, I said, speaking to Chris Langan, send in your questions. And mo all, most of the questions were about metaphysics and God and the CTMU and all of your thoughts on all those things. But one friend of mine, he said, you know, I want you to ask him about Bitcoin. I want you to ask him about money and if there, basically if there's any way to break uh, the government or super government control of money. What do you think of, if I want to start my own, my own currency, I guess I could, I'd call it Michael Coin. Is there, is there any is this one way to push back against an increasingly technocratic global form of government? Yes, there is, but it has to start at the local level. You're not going to print your own world currency yeah. to compete head to head with these. You've got to go, you know, basically attend a few city council meetings. You've got to go in there, you know, 
say your piece, say we've got a problem, you know, basically the world is run by globalism, this is America, you know, we should have our right of self-determination here, but that's being taken away from us. See who, uh, you know, agrees with you about it. You know, I mean, somebody will probably come up to you after your speech and say, you know, I agree with you 100%. You, you, then you start, you find out who those people are, you get together, and you start putting pressure on your local politicians. Are, are you saying the situation is so bad politically that uh, actually, ac you know, People will call you a radical and an extremist and a terrorist for, for something like this. But are you saying basically, Jefferson, we need to, we need to go fight another revolution or something? Or is there... Is there... Uh, I, I, I would just as soon see this whole thing resolved nonviolently. Of course, I want, you know, I want peace on earth. I want everybody to feel as though we're, we're in fellowship with each other. The brotherhood of man. You know what I'm talking about. That is the right way to do it. When, when you or I or or Donald Trump, for that matter, use, use the word globalism. What the liberal establishment says is, oh, that's either they'll say globalism is good and we should have more of it, or they'll say that's a crazy conspiracy theory. There's no such thing as globalism. <laughs> <laughs> what? I could, I could point to a lot of international organizations that increasingly try to take power away from national government. Well, what are intelligence agencies? What are trade secrets? What's, what's intellectual property? They're, they're property? They're all conspiracies. Right. Okay? People trying to get ahead by lying hmm. by omission or relying directly to other people, hmm. the, comp the competition, right? That's what it is. You can't get away from conspiracy. It's how the world works. As a matter of fact, it's game <laughs> theoretically <laughs> rational. So, so you're saying not conspiracy theory. You're saying just flat out conspiracy. That's what makes the world go around, I'm afraid, <laughs> you know? And, oh, but uh, of course, you know, the, the elite hmm. themselves realize this. They know that that's how the world works. They just want to distract you. Well, that's that's such a such a great way to put it, where you say a trade secret, or or just just a group of people come together. They say, "I've got this good idea for a company, and we're going to come together and do that, and we're not going to let the competition know about it. We're going to start this, and we're going to hopefully it'll be successful, and we'll make some money." And the, the, that is a form of WF conspiracy. and their young global leader program. You hmm. know, young global leaders. I mean, everybody's a young global leader, you know, right? 